All right, so 8, 8, day 2, another form of an improper integral. So we looked already at infinite limits, where one of the bounds is infinity. So we set it up as a limit statement, limit as b approaches infinity, 1 to b, and then we integrate from there. Now an infinite discontinuity, notice my function here, the domain of this function is x can equal 0. Well, 0 is one of the boundaries, so I have to set that up as a limit as well. Now, if we look from 0 to 1, I'm going to be approaching 0 from the right-hand side. So then a to 1, and I would integrate the function from there. In proper integrals, you always need a limit to eventually evaluate the integral to see if it's going to converge or diverge. Infinite limits versus infinite discontinuities. All right, if you want to pause this for a minute. But how are the two the same? We replace the boundaries, rewrite the integral as a limit, integrate the function. These are all the rules that you could use on any given assignment. And then we evaluate the limit. Okay, L'Hopital's is still, we might need that, maybe not. Um, graphs of functions, okay. If the limit exists, the integral converges. If the limit doesn't exist, the integral diverges. I have this on a worksheet as well that you already have possession of, just so you can see what the definition looks like. And then lastly, a couple graphs, okay? I'll go over some strategies, but you definitely need to know the end behavior of arc tangent. Arc secant is equal to the arc cosine of 1 over x. So it could be more valuable for us to evaluate an arc secant limit using this definition than maybe having to remember what the graph of arc secant looks like. And then I put this in for you, again, y is equal to e to the x, and it's inverse, y is equal to ln of x, just so you can see the end behaviors and the vertical asymptotes of that graph as well. All right, so determine whether the improper integral converges or diverges. So when I look at my function, domain is that x can equal 0. 0 is one of the limits. So, or excuse me, one of the bounds of integration. Limit as a approaches 0 from the right, because I'm going from 0 to 1, of x to the negative 1 third dx from a to 1. So when we integrate this using the power rule, limit as a approaches 0 from the right, add 1, divide by the new, so I have the I'm going to, because this is how most of the solutions are set up. So first I'm going to replace, hold on, don't know why I made that an A. That should be X. My upper bound, I don't need the limit statement, so this would just be 3 halves minus the limit as A approaches 0 from the right of 3a to the 2 thirds all over 2. This limit approaches 0, so the limit of the integral is 3 halves, and therefore the integral converges. So when we look at these functions, and something you have to be aware of for your test, identify the domain restriction if it exists. If that's one of the boundaries or in the interval, then you have to set it up as an improper integral with a limit. So negative 1 to 2 of 1 over x cubed. The domain of this function is that x can equal 0. Well, 0 is in the interval. So we're going to have to set up two limits here. So I'm going to set up the limit as a approaches 0 from the left-hand side. And I'm going to go from negative 1 to a of the function. And then I'm going to add to that, I need another limit statement. Now I'm going to set up b, 0 from the right, from b to 1 of x to the negative third dx. Okay, so the infinite discontinuity happened between the bounds, so then we just have to set up two limit statements. 
and we know properties of limits where one leaves off the other one has to pick up and at zero is where the infinite discontinuity would be. Alright, so I get the limit as a approaches zero from the left of x to the negative two divided by negative two from negative one to a and then the limit as b approaches zero from the right of negative one over two x squared from b to one. So we'll just move these to the bottom just so it's easier to evaluate the limit. All right, so now let's think about this. One over negative two x squared. This is what that graph looks like. Ooh. Okay, so no matter the value of x, y is always gonna be negative. So zero from the left, I have an infinite limit, and zero from the right, I have an infinite limit. So even looking at the first one, this limit approaches negative infinity. So automatically the function diverges, the in integral diverges, and I don't need to go any further. Okay, so that's where on that first screen when I said perhaps the graph will give us information about the limit. All right, you don't have to go any further once you get one limit to not exist, the entire thing diverges. All right, ln of x squared, so the graph of the natural log function, zero would be an infinite discontinuity. So we know the domain of this function, x has to be any number greater than zero. I'm gonna bring the two, let's look at it like this. I'm going to bring the 2 out front. Okay, that's my property of logs. And then I'll set it up as 2 times the limit as a approaches 0 from the right. a to e of the natural log of x dx. Now you have integrated this as a um, classwork problem, but in order to integrate the natural log, you need parts. So my order to pick u, logarithmic function is the first. So that would make dv equal to dx. Derivative of u is 1 over x. Antiderivative of dx is x. So then I have 2 times the limit as a approaches 0 from the right. So the antiderivative of the natural log of x would be u times v minus the antiderivative of v times u. And I'm gonna hold off on my boundaries for a minute here. So two limit as a approaches zero from the right x ln of x minus, this just becomes the antiderivative of dx, okay, and the antiderivative of 1 dx, a approaches 0 from the right, x ln of x minus x. Now I'll put my boundaries back in from a to e. All right, so I'm going to put this on the next screen because the limit will take us a couple steps. So I have 2 times the limit as a approaches 0 from the right, x ln of x minus x from a to e. Okay, so when I plug e in, I don't need the limit statement, so I have e ln of e minus e, and then I'm going to subtract from that the limit as a approaches zero from the right of a ln of a minus a. Okay, so the 
natural log of e is 1, so e minus e would give me 0. So now let's just look at this. Okay, a direct substitution, 0 from the right. So here's my natural log function, graph of my natural log function. If I replace a with 0, I get 0. Natural log of a, a from the 0 from the right hand side, this would be negative infinity. So this is an indeterminate form. We can't use L'Hopital's until we make it into 0 over 0 or some form of infinity over infinity. So then I'm going to make it natural log of a divided by 1 over a. Now when I do, now make sure that it's set up for L'Hopital's. So we said a from the right hand side, this would be negative infinity. And then 1 over 0 from the right. So here's the graph of 1 over x. 0 from the right approaches positive infinity. So now I can use L'Hopital's. All right, so derivative of natural log of a is 1 over a. Derivative of a to the negative 1 is negative 1 over a squared. So then I would have negative a squared divided by a. This becomes negative a. So the limit that I'm evaluating is negative a minus a. Okay, so the limit as a approaches 0 from the right of a times the ln of a becomes negative a by the Hopital's. And this minus a is from the original substitution. So now bringing it all back together, I have 2. When I substituted in e, I got a value of 0. When I evaluate this limit, it's also 0. So the entire limit is 0, which means the integral converges. Okay, so the last one, let's just set this one up and we can finish it in class. Alright, so the domain of this function, so when I look at x squared minus 25, okay, well then I know that x can't equal 5, okay, because if I have 5 it would put 0 in the bottom. And I know that my domain would actually be any number smaller than negative 5 or bigger than positive 5. But the restriction for the limit would be that x can't equal 5. So I have an infinite discontinuity and almost a lim and also an infinite limit. So this will become the limit as x approaches 5 from the right. x a from the right of a to and you can pick any number in the domain so just for argument's sake we'll pick 10 all right that value is not going to matter and you're going to see why and then I'm going to add to that the limit as b approaches infinity okay this integral bound ended at 10, so this one has to start at 10, so from 10 to b of the same integrand. And we'll stop there. No homework for you to do. We'll complete that problem in class.